Catholic priest. Peace, my lot. No, wait, that's something else. <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. God, our Father, as we come together on this second day of pilgrimage and the holy land in which you gave your people, the land in which your son died and rose, we ask you to be with us today, especially as we go to these holy places. Lord God, please put deep within our spirits your mercy. Please be with each one of us and help us to become the saints you're calling us to be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Here's the Mount of Beatitudes. We're approaching the mountain where Jesus taught the Beatitudes for Mass. It is raining very hard. Not good for us, but good for the sea down there. But we all have a nice outdoor mass covered. He went up this mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him and he began to teach them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. takes with his sins the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs> Just take a look at the buses here, lining the parking lot, people from all over the world, and this is only the middle of February. He was telling, talking to people about being saved, and he started talking to me, and I, I was I was kind of stumped and flummoxed, and so I, uh, it made me start thinking about my faith more and more as a 15-year-old, and uh, at that time, I don't feel like I had a good, really good theological basis. I feel like I've been handed a lot of mush in my face. That's one together since we're both on the bus, which is kind of nice because normally I don't get to uh, travel to the Holy Land with my husband. So I uh, appreciate the opportunity. What we're going to do, what we do for our testimony is we lead you through our, our journey back home um, from the church to the church, back home to the church with Scripture Here I am 17 years later, still on the air. So bottom line, when you wrestle with God, as long as you understand that he's going to win, you're going to be okay, and that's the best place you can be. And that's our story, and we're sticking to it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Teresa. You're Dominic. Welcome. We're now arriving at Banyas, or Biblical, Caesarea Philippi. This is the water, headwaters of the Jordan River that flow out from underneath this rock at Caesarea Philippi where Jesus said, you are rocking on this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell right there will not prevail against it. This is for the whole Ray family, all of our great grandkids and wonderful new baby Peter. We're at Caesarea Philippi right now where Jesus named Simon Peter and that means rock and I've got a nice couple of rocks here that I'm gonna send to my new grandson Peter right from this place the week he was born. We're here in February with lots of rains so look at the water.
Thank you, Peter, for defining me. Now I'm going to define you. You are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. We read that in English and we lose the word play. What does Peter have to do with rock? And on this Petra, I will build my church. You begin to see a little bit of a common similarity between those two words, Petros and Petra. Ah, said I, Steve Ray the Baptist. Petros is different from Petra. You Catholics say that Peter is the rock, and on this rock the church will be built. But Jesus said you are Petros, and on the Petra I will build my church. So we used to say that it was the confession of Peter. It was his con There we're arriving for lunch. People are getting off the bus. Lebanese restaurant here in the Druze country. We just made all the fresh falafels. Big fella. And they go into this sandwich right here. That's what everybody, a lot of people are going to have falafels. And look at all the salads too that they go. They, these things go in the falafels and in the Druze bread. There's the drinks. Everybody's going to be seated here and have their lunch. <laughs> Druze bread sandwich. Here we are at the Le Ren Lebanon. Ren Lebanani restaurant. Lots of good salads. Also, they got some chicken cooking. That's not for us, but that's a nice grill. So what do you think, Cheryl? Is it all right? Oh, yeah, this is really delicious. I took pictures of it, and I even opened up to show what's inside. Good. You like the falafel? Very good. Very that's good. Great. Everybody enjoying the sandwiches? Very good. Got a big dinner coming, so we have a simple lunch today. No, we haven't even done it. There you, you like it, Dennis? I like the falafel better than the Drew's sandwich. No, All right, I, I, I like, like the, the Drew's. I like the Drew's better I like too. The Drews. Well, at least she has selections. <laughs> Good. There's the Jordan River, very full of water today. Yeah. We drive along the Sea of Galilee and come to the place called Heptabagon, which is shortened to Tabga. This is the Church of Tabga, where the multiplication of loaves took place. And here's a lot of information about all the biblical things that took place here. The beginning is a veneration of a spot which you will see inside the church when you come in under the altar you're going to see part of a rock sticking out from the mosaic floor that is the rock which the early christians marked as the place where jesus took the five loaves of bread the two fish prayed blessed multiplied and he fed the crowds here. That's our group under the awning there, learning about this church. And I'm going to take you in and show you where they're going to see, what they're going to see in just a few minutes. Into the church. And this is the church of the multiplication of loaves and fish. It was built over a rock, much smaller now because people have chipped away to take pieces home. But under this rock, altar is a rock which marks the place since the first century where Christians venerated the multiplication of loaves and fish. And there you can see the mosaic from the fifth century of the loaves and fish. Peter's primacy is Teresa Tamio's favorite place in the Holy Land. And we arrive here at the church and I give a talk about John chapter 21, which is what happened here. And I explain all the deeper meanings of it. Peter, it says that they came back up here after the resurrection. And Peter's a fisherman, and I think he kind of had a, well, what are we going to do now? Well, guys, where's Jesus? I don't know. We were following for three years, and now we don't know where he is. The life has changed for us. Peter says, I'm going to go back to fishing. <laughs> Interesting, it said that Peter left his boats and nets and followed Jesus, but when he got back here, Peter got into his boat and went out fishing. They were still here. Peter, I think, went out and just said, well, let's do what we all, we, we're good at. Let's do what we do. Kind of like, let's go back to our old way of living. And he went out fishing. Didn't catch anything all night. In the morning, 
There's a guy standing on the shore in the mist. It's a hundred yards. That's the length of a football field. Now all the guys know how far away it was. <laughs> They've been fishing. Yeah, girls do. Mainly. Not, not my girl. <laughs> yeah. the, the fishermen out there didn't catch anything all night long. They're very discouraged and frustrated. They hear a voice from the shore. Cast your net over on the other side. Peter yells back, don't tell me what to do. I'm the master fisherman and you fish at night, not in the morning. No, he didn't do that. Why he threw his net on the other side, I did not know because he didn't know it was the Lord yet. We find out that he found out it was the Lord later. Throws his net over on the boat out there, 100 yards out. They catch a lot of fish. How many? 150. Very good. I always used to say 157 and I didn't know why. And then Janet says, that's because there's 157 Heinz ketchups that, you know, so I got <laughs> stuck in my head. At the Church of Primacy, and I'm going to go in and show you the Mensa Christi, the table of the Lord, where he fed the disciples in John chapter 21. There's the rock, and our folks are laying their rosaries on that rock. Right there it says Mensa Christi. was here at this church, the primacy of Peter in the 380s, and she said, when we came to the place where Jesus fed them breakfast in John 21, there were steps uh, carved into the rock that we went up, and that there were three hearts. I love you, I love you, I love you. Those have been here from well before 380 AD. There's the Sea of Galilee where Jesus said, throw your net on the other side, and brought them in and gave them breakfast at the rock that we just saw inside of there. So we're arriving back at the Ron Beach Hotel for an hour and a half free time to regroup before we go out to the Magdalena restaurant. Welcome to the Magdalena. Look at that sign right there. This is a Christian restaurant because we support the Christians when we come to the Holy Land. But it's also the finest restaurant in Israel. We're all unloading there. And look what we're gonna see. People coming up the stairs already. And look at the fish tank that we're gonna see as we go in. What a beautiful place. And look at the wine selection here. One of the best wine selections in Israel, I think. Look at that. So welcome to the Magdalena restaurant. Here's the bar, by the way. You're not gonna run out of choices here. And there's our host, Amir, who is welcoming us all to dinner. And here's where our group is going to be seated, right here. This is all our tables. Welcome to the Magdalena restaurant. We are about to receive from the Magdalena, Christ our Lord. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bon appetit. The best appetizers and salads in Israel. Look at that. Thanks to them and everything they're doing for us. I want to introduce you to the chef who's a Christian chef of the finest restaurant in Israel, Zuzu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. He wants to know if you enjoyed the dinner. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.